I've got a confession, guys. I've been building and making things basically my whole life. And even after getting into smoking a lot of meat and cooking the past couple years, I've still just been using plastic trays and have never made a single cutting board, which is probably the number one woodworking project there is. So this is long overdue and stick with me here. I didn't want to just make a basic cutting board. Might as well throw in some exotic and expensive woods and some really cool techniques to trick these things out. I wanted to make two boards, one average size and one pretty big one. And the main wood I'm using for both of them is hard maple. I am using some scrap strips that I had on hand, but for the most part, I picked up a new eight quarter board to use. I'm making edge grain boards. So by starting with the thicker two inch material, I'll be able to have less strips needed to make up the overall width of the cutting boards. And that's just the look I was wanting. So after breaking the pieces down closer to final size on the miter saw, I could get one face flattened and square up an edge on the joiner, then flatten the opposite face through the planer. I wasn't taking the material down to any specific thickness on the planer, really just trying to keep them as thick as possible and just making sure both faces were flat and co-planer. Over on the table saw, the width that I have the saw set at, since I'm making edge grain boards, this dimension is how thick the cutting boards will end up being after the pieces are all rotated. I'm going for one and a quarter inch thick boards here, so I have the saw set just a little bigger than that, so I can plane the whole board down to thickness after the glue ups. For the design on the smaller board, I needed some thin strips of both the wenge and maple. So I got those resawed down on the bandsaw and then sent through the planer to get them cleaned up and taken down to a quarter inch thick. As I add these strips of wenge and bloodwood to this board, I'm sure a lot of you can guess which logo I'll be carving into this later. And college football season is back, so we gotta get this done. And let's go ahead and hear all the trash talk and love for your team down in the comments. For the larger board, I'm bringing in some zebra wood and walnut for the accents. I wish I would've got some up close shots of the zebra wood here. It looks so dang cool, but after oiling the boards, one of the strips got pretty dark and lost all of that cool detail. So that's kind of a bummer on this one. It's crazy how much time you can spend just laying out and swapping pieces around to completely change the look here. So those of you that make a lot of cutting boards, let me know down in the comments how much time you waste just moving pieces and standing there looking at it before finally deciding to just glue it up. Or maybe it was just me. I was able to keep the glue ups pretty flat, but like I said, I left some wiggle room there anyway, so I could go ahead and run the whole boards through the planer to get them flattened. And as you can see, maxing out my 16 inch planer with this bigger board. Like I said, I've never even made a cutting board before, so might as well try a technique on it that I've also never done either and potentially ruin it, right? But to make this board really awesome, I wanted to try my hand at doing a V-carve inlay with the Ohio State logo into it. Now I'm not a CNC expert, so I'm not going to pretend like I am. I just did a search for it and a video from a channel called Greg's Garage came up. It's a great, clear and concise 10 minute video on how to set this up in V-carve Pro. And I just did exactly what he said to do. 
So I'll put a link to his video down in the description if you want an in-depth explanation on how this works and all the machine settings. But in simple terms, I'm just carving out the whole logo into the cutting board and then carving out the reverse mirrored image of it into the other colored pieces of wood to lay back in and refill the cutout. I'm first making a clearance pass with either a Freud eighth inch or quarter inch spiral down cut bit and then following that up with a 60 degree V bit for the final edge and sharp points. I'll leave links for these bits along with everything else I'm using throughout the video down in the description if you want to check them out. The Wingate and Bloodwood are extremely hard woods, but they machined beautifully. And speaking of the Bloodwood, I initially planned on just doing the whole logo with Wingate and then the whole thing would just be black. But that's not how the logo truly is and I just knew if I took that easy route, I'd regret it and not be happy with myself. So what the hey, first time doing it, but gotta do it right and try to do two different cutouts. So phase one is just the big red block O and then the rest would be black with the wing gay. To clamp the piece on to dry, I took this old bottle jack, which in itself is pretty heavy, to sit on top of it, and then I just took a piece of wood and used it as a press under the bed of my joiner to make sure it was really pressed down in there to dry. With that drying, I could move over and keep working on the other board. On this one, I wanted to add a juice groove around the whole thing, so I first needed to make a jig, which is simply just a frame around the whole thing that I can run my router along with a Freud 3 quarter inch round nose bit to make the groove. I know a lot of people that all they do is make cutting boards and there's pretty good money in it. And the only way to be efficient making multiple things is with jigs like this. Now I'm not planning on making more of these, so this is just a quick and dirty one thrown together. Next I wanted to add a finger groove, I guess you would call it, on the ends of the board to make picking it up easier. For this I'm using a half inch cove bit set up in the router table. I have start and stop pencil marks on the router fence and I'm just going off the strips of the zebra wood to center the groove between them. The last thing to do on this one is hit all the edges with an eighth inch roundover bit and get it sanded. With the first inlay now dry on the other board, I could get the excess material trimmed off. You'll see there's space left between the boards to be able to run it through the bandsaw to cut it off. In theory. I resaw a lot in my bandsaw and have never had an issue with blade drift. But man, this blood wood is no joke. It's so hard and was just instantly smoking the blade and not wanting to cut straight. On to plan B and that was just sending it through the planer. The big risk here is tear out. But with the helical head in the planer and just taking really light passes, I was able to get it trimmed down enough to be able to continue on with the second inlay. This project really did make me think about bringing a drum sander into the shop though, which would be ideal here. For this glue up, I needed to use my joiner to start on another project, so I switched over to just using this opening in my workbench to get it pressed in to dry. Not gonna lie, with this being my first time trying something like this, it's been a while since I was this excited to just get back in the shop after waiting for glue to dry to continue on and just see how it was going to turn out. 
always fun and cool to try something new. And like I said, just a feeling of excitement. I know a cutting board video is probably the most basic thing on my channel and might not get many views, but I needed to make them anyway, so might as well film it and share the process with you all. And gosh, this inlay turned out so cool. Definitely give it a try if you have a CNC and haven't yet. No juice groove on the Ohio State board, but I did add the finger holds, and all that was left to do is apply a few coats of mineral oil and leave them to dry, just in time for some delicious smoked meats on game day.